Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on the Video Game Design Challenge. I'm going to spend just a minute briefly reviewing content from last time, introducing some new vocabulary terms, and then talk about expectations for creating your own video game character. So the last two videos, your only assignment was to become familiar with Piskel, looking at the different tools and effects throughout the, um, the software to become familiar with them, proficient with them, so then you can start to build your actual video game. So now we're going to talk about a few new terms. The first couple terms we're going to be talking about are utilizing various gradations of color. Your artwork must have various degrees of colors or hues, not just one. So if we look carefully at Yoshi here, he's not just red. There's a range of colors that are called values, tints, and shades to create that illusion of volume and depth in a flat image. Analogous colors are families of colors that look similarly and are placed next to each other on the color wheel. To create an analogous color set, you need to have at least three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. An example of analogous colors, if we look at the color wheel, are red, red orange, and orange. Those are three colors next to each other on the color wheel. A non-example, what I don't want you to do, are, are the following, red, yellow, and blue. Those are all separated and not next to each other on the color wheel. In just a second, I'm going to show you how to find all of these analogous colors and create them using Piskel. The final vocabulary terms for today are tints and shades. Tints are colors that have white added to them to make them lighter. If you look at the colors at the top, you can see that those are lighter because they have more white added to it. Shades are the opposite. Shades are when you add black to an original color to make it darker. So as you look at the bottom of those color swatches, you can see that they're all significantly darker in hue. Now that we learned about analogous colors and tints and shades, I'm going to show you how to create your original unique character for your video game design challenge. First, create a new sprite and open up your blank canvas and make sure your settings are correctly resized. I would start with 32 by 32 and you can adjust it from there. This should be the default setting but it never hurts to check. What I usually do to begin is take the pen tool and make a black outline of my character starting from the top to the head and then work my way down to the rest of the figure. I'm going to undo all that, control Z, and show you a different way using the mirror tool. Using the mirror pen tool allows you to draw things symmetrically. So if I draw on the left side, it automatically creates whatever is on the right side. It might take a little getting used to, but if you do it this way, you can literally cut your time in half when you're drawing your character. When you're drawing, don't worry about being perfect. Just draw something, get something on your screen, and you can adjust and modify and change and erase as you go. Now as I'm working here, I'm noticing that I'm running out of space. As After I fill my arms, the rest of the torso, I'm going to need some, to extend my canvas. To extend my canvas, go to the resize and you can change it instead of the 32 by 32, maybe 32 by 64 and it'll stretch out your character. So play with, around with some of the adjustments here to make sure it fits how you want it to be. So now that I'm working on the lower half of my character, I'm going to be finishing up the lower half. Um, as you're working, you can zoom in and zoom out by just using two fingers on your D-pad or your touch screen. Again, if you widen your fingers, you'll zoom out. If you close them up, you'll zoom in. And the indicator on the top right will give you a kind of a perspective on what you're zooming in or out of. So now that I've outlined traced all of my character in black, I'm going to be filling in with color. This is kind of more the fun part where your character comes alive. I paint bucket filled all of the different kind of suggestions of metal in my character, and then I can go back and fill in the other areas that I think would suggest leather or some other type of armor for my character. Again, as you're working on this, really try to think about tints and shades. Tints are when colors are lighter or added white to it and shades are when you're adding black to a color to make it darker. Your character look much more dynamic and have more suggestion of volume if you use this technique of a variety of colors. Otherwise, it'll look a lot more flat and not as realistic in this Piskel perspective. Now what I want to show you is this lighting tool, which is really a quick and effective way of giving you a variety of textures and colors in your um, Piskel character. So for this, I thought it was really helpful to show the shine and metallic surface of my metal through this lightning tool. I just put a couple little like strikes and swipes on the metal to create that illusion of shine and, um, and metallic feature on my character. 
So now what I'm going to do is add some shadow throughout my character. I found that exact same brown that I used before, but then I dropped it into a darker shade. So I lowered that kind of little swatch to a darker area. And I'm kind of outlining different areas to show the suggestion of volume, depth, and shadow. This really is helpful to make your otherwise very pixelated image look much more three-dimensional. So again, as you're working, just really try to use tints and shades. Tints are when you make a color look lighter by adding white. Shades are when you make a color look darker by adding black. So use a variety of these tints and shades to create a realistic volume and depth throughout your character and all the materials that are found in Piscal. Now, Piscal is not like Google where it automatically saves. You must save your work. So please make sure you go to the save column on the right and make sure you save to your gallery. If you don't do this, your work will not be saved progressively. If you save it correctly, when you go to your gallery, you'll see your work um, appear in that gallery. As always, please complete the daily participation form. This allows me to track your progress and also for you to show evidence of your progression. Please take a snapshot of your work and upload it to this daily participation form. So that's it for today's video. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me or pop in for office hours 1 to 2 p.m. Have fun, do your best quality work, and be creative.